I'm a math major um, in my sophomore year at the University of Vermont. And something I didn't know when I became a math major is at higher levels of more abstract math, you don't really write your homework on paper anymore. I mean, some classes do, it depends on the professor, but more and more commonly, um, my professors have been using LaTeX to type up my homework. I spent like a year using LaTeX and I had a whole setup for it, uh, but I found it just a, like such a pain to set that up and such a pain to use. Um, and I found towards the end of the year, this new language called Typest, which is a lot like LaTeX. It has the same, it f like fills the same role. It kind of compiles to PDF. The way most people would access it, uh, I think is through, they've got a website called types.app. Uh, it pulls up like a little editor with a live preview like this. You can like, so you can type anything and it, it live updates. Um, yeah, it's, it's just like Overleaf, if you've ever used that for LaTeX. Um, I know that was really popular among people in my classes to, to just like get LaTeX up and running easily. Types is just, types.app is just a lot faster. It's got a whole great documentation website. Like if you Google anything, like say you wanted to make a table um, and you Google types to table, it's just like the first result on Google is their documentation. It just tells you exactly how to do it. It's like, it's just so much better than hunting around on forums for like obscure LaTeX packages for some random symbol. They've got it all. Um, and those are the web versions of it. And personally, I like to be offline and I've used Vim for a long time. So I'm always gonna look for a Vim integration. The, the tooling around that is really good. Some people swept in and just made like an amazing suite, kind of like Vim text, um, but just, it's just so much faster and smoother and better. So if I jump to my terminal, um, this is homework for um, an abstract algebra class I took last semester. I have kind of a template and then I've got all my problem sets here. So if I jump into the sixth one, you can see I'm kind of importing a couple things. This is from the, um, the template I have. This header just kind of creates a like a, what class I'm in. I can show you actually. I have a, I have a key map set up which will open a preview. Um, it's just like my name the the class whatnot I like to usually bring it next to uh, Vim just so I can see the changes live I have a couple other things going on in this template um, I've got this QS environment right here uh, which is for questions you can see that just um, it kind of indents everything and then I've got the ABC subparts of the question and then I've also got this ANS um, which is kind of another indent, and I actually have a proof, I think I call it PRF, yeah. Um, and that creates a little square at the bottom, a little QED square. And yeah, it's just, with Vim snippets and everything, it's just so easy and smooth to write homework straight, like, no paper, just type it up. At least for the classes I'm in so far, I mean. Let me actually go into a little bit more how the preview command works. That is through something called typespreview.mvim. Jump into my vim config and open my local plugins folder. I'm using a plugin I wrote that manages different previews for different file types, um, like Markdown and CSV, um, and also types. You can see right here, typespreview.mvim. And the command you use to start types preview is like this. Um, if if I use my command, it basically just determines what the file type is and what preview it needs to use, what command it needs to use to open it. So I have a, I have leader p, which is space for me, mapped to that. So I can just hit leader p in any file. If I were to open a typed file, I've already previewed it, but to use the actual command instead of the shortcut, um, I could use omni preview start as an argument. Yeah. So that'll open that up, and you may notice it's in a browser, and if you're coming from Vimtex and LaTeX in general, the approach there is to continuously like compile the document into a PDF and then just have a preview like Zathura that's capable of live refreshing, and that works all right. It, there's a, a lot more delay 
that's that's the biggest downside the other problem with it is zathra if you're on a mac is really hard to get um it's just it's a nightmare to compile and things are always breaking with it you may be wondering if this is a web preview how do you get a pdf of your of your document um well you can use the types compiler um like that um, and that'll export a PDF. You could open to verify, but yeah. Uh, also, um, TinyMist, which is the language server protocol for typed currently, um, has a command export PDF, export. Yeah, you can see it can actually export a bunch of different file types, which is something LaTeX can't do. Yeah, so that's not actually true. LaTeX can export other file types. You just have to use Pandoc. Or there's a couple other tools that do it, but it's more of a headache. An actual like demonstration of some of the language features. So, for instance, say I'm doing some set theory. I, I have MT mapped for dollar signs, which is how you go into math mode. Um, very similar to LaTeX, but instead of two dollar signs, multi-line math is like that with spaces on either side. So, say I wanted like some kind of like for all x y in natural numbers and latex you'd have to do like a backslash math bb and this they just have constants for all of it and you can see it my my lsp is showing me that that'll give me natural numbers for all x y maybe i'll make this like a tuple in and n. and the n is just like the plain english equivalent to do some square brackets no need to escape them or anything and what about like f of x is congruent I'm not sure what congruent is, but I can guess it might be equal dot, oh, equivalent. Yeah, or equal eq dot triple. Yeah, that's another way to get it. There's just multiple ways it's like super easy to think about. Um, I'll just go with a quiv and then like g of y or whatever. And you know, and the beautiful thing is there is, there's just shortcuts for symbols that are super intuitive. If I want implies, I could go arrow dot double, not terrible, but I could also go um, like that, and that would give me implies. If I go over to the live preview, um, you can see, yeah, it's, it's just populated the arrow like that, and then like, you know, x dot dot dot, whatever. Um, and all those symbols are available on the website. You get a hang of them pretty quickly because they're just what, they're exactly what you think they would be. Do lists like that, one, two, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you can also auto increment like that. Um, oh, one really cool thing is say you're reusing something a lot, like a, a variable, and it's kind of cumbersome to type. For instance, what if it's like a sub 23? Um, and you don't want to type that all the time. It's not terrible, but you're going to use it constantly. You can actually declare variables uh, with the let keyword um, and put that like that in math. Oh, it needs a name. Let's call it A. So yeah, um, if I wanted to reference that in here, you can do that with the dollar sign, or not dollar sign, hashtag. Um, so that'll pop up right there. And for instance, I could embed it in something like maybe I have a limit from A to, let's make another variable. Um, I'm not sure how the limit works actually. It might take, you might have to do the arrow yourself. I think you do. So let's do B um, and let's make that like calligraphic and row, the Greek letter, um, capital row actually. And oh, another thing is you can if you make the variables longer than one letter, so I say, um, by the way, and then you don't need the hashtag with the preview. Yeah, you can see that that doesn't look all that calligraphic, but I guess it's I guess it's just the choice of the row. If I went like with a D, yeah, it, it, you can see that's more calligraphic. Variables are just actually the beginning of that. Types has like a whole scripting language built into it, so you can define like conditionals and functions and whatnot and people make some really like complicated behavior i won't show it because i don't find i really use that when i'm i'm like writing math homework i'm only ever defining a couple variables um but i like people have made 
I think Tetris within this, um, just purely with the the type scripting, which is insane, honestly. Um, yeah, I've I've used it a bit. I was making a nonsense math paper generator a while ago, and I was able to do like all of that purely in types, which is amazing. Um, the, yeah, the scripting part of the language is really good. Yeah, I hope I convinced you to maybe give types to try if you're using LaTeX or if you are looking for a new math major setup, hopefully types is, you just go right into that. Um, yeah, that's about it. I feel like I might have glazed over my template or whatnot a little bit. I'd love to come back and do a more in-depth dive if there's demand for it, uh, but yeah.